Hi, my name is Michelle Herrick, and I am an undergraduate student at the University of California, Santa Cruz. I am performing my research in the Konopelsky Lab at UCSC. So my, my project is on um, beta-lactam chemistry from an alpha amino acid, L-aspartic acid. So what are lactams? Well, there are three different types of lactams. You have the beta-lactam, the gamma-lactam, and the delta-lactam. So as you can tell, their main difference is in their structures. So we're focusing on beta-lactams because beta-lactams are found in different types of antibiotics that are used today. So there are four classes of beta-lactam antibiotics. There are the penicillins, the penams, the cephalosporins, and the monobactams. Our research came about when a former graduate student from the Konopelsky lab was trying to synthesize 3 acyl oxindole, this, which is this compound right here. He reacted an N-protected acid analyt with an n tridylserine imidazolide to get tridylserine obenzyl beta ketoamide. He then treated that with a rhodium-2 catalyst. And from his NMR spectra, he found that he didn't have the 3 acyl oxindole product which he was trying to get. Because the product was a stable crystalline solid, they were able to obtain an x-ray of the compound. And from the x-ray, they realized that it contained this beta-lactam nucleus. So this was very exciting because it opened up um, a new research project for the lab. So that project was then taken on by the graduate student who I worked who I currently work under. And she started it with, she started the project using L-serine as her amino acid. So there are two main differences in the conventional pathway of synthesizing beta-lactams from our pathway of synthesizing beta-lactams. So there are two main differences that I would like to point out. In the conventional pathway, the reaction proceeds via an intermolecular mechanism. Intermolecular means that you take two different substrates, you react them together, and you get one final product. And in our pathway, we start out with one substrate. The substrate reacts with itself, and that is called intramolecular. So the other difference is probably the most important difference between the conventional pathway and our pathway. In the conventional pathway, their final product is a racemic beta-lactam. And in our pathway, we obtain an enantiomerically pure beta-lactam. And this is important because in the case of thalidomide, thalidomide was prescribed to pregnant women um, to, uh, for morning sickness. And because it was racemic, there's, there was an so there was an optically active form and then an inactive form. And the inactive form became activated and it started producing birth defects in these pregnant women. So it's very important to obtain enantiomerically pure products. So the, former, or the graduate student that I worked under was able to make this reaction work for L-serine. And because it did work, our professor thought, well, if it works for L-serine, it'll probably work for aspartic acid because the functional groups of L-serine and aspartic acid are very similar. So that is how I came into the picture. So I took on the project of um, synthesizing beta-lactams from aspartic acid. And so why, are aspartic, why is aspartic acid so important? Well, aspartic acid m may be a gateway to thainomycin which is one of the most potent naturally occurring class of carbapenem antibiotics. And here's the structure of thainomycin. So the overview of my project was that we were going to start with a fully protected d acid and that would undergo wolf rearrangement and then a hydrolysis to obtain our enantiomerically pure beta-lactam. So my synthesis the first part of the synthesis is to get the fully protected aspartic acid. So I obtained this in four steps. And to optimize the yield of my reactions, I recrystallized my tridyl chloride. I distilled my diisopropylamine. Um, that really did help with the yield. Bef before I did that, 
I wasn't getting almost 100% yield. I was getting about 60-70% yield. So it really does make a difference. All of my reactions were monitored by thin layer chromatography, TLC, and after each step, all of my products were purified by flash column chromatography. And that fact also um, contributed to my really ex to my excellent yields. So all my products were, were verified and characterized by proton and carbon NMR, mass spectrometry, and IR. So in conclusion, the purpose of our project is that we're going to try to get start from this aspartic acid, protect it, make the beta-lactam product, because finding new pathways to something that's going to um, be used in an antibiotics is very important. So my future work is that um, I'm going to find an al alternative hydrolysis procedure to try to increase this yield and I would also like to find the right conditions for this wine rib amide coupling that I never did get to work. But, um, and of course, as you can see, this ha my synthesis has many different steps. So minimizing the number of steps would be an awesome thing to do. And if this does work for L-aspartic acid, then we will see if it will, will, will work for D-aspartic acid. That's it. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. That was a great presentation. I can tell you really know your stuff. I was pretty amazed by um, your vocabulary, especially in the methods and results section. Um, uh, a couple things that I really, really liked were uh, the f was the fact that you don't have a lot of words, and I think that chemistry probably is uh, helps out with that because it's just sort of this is sort of one reaction to an, to the result, so that helps. I really like that you were able to put all your information in a nice, clear, and concise way. Um, you have your methods and results, all the steps set up very clearly, and I think it's big enough. Um, did you have to choose? Did you have to cut certain things out? No. You were able to just get it all on there, huh? Mm -hmm. That's great. So I like that. Um, I think you... I added more stuff in, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Like, um, so, so one of the other things I like is that you have um, your abstract introduction methods results. All the components of the poster that need to be there are clearly um, uh, put in a large font so that I can really go to each section that I'd like to see. Your acknowledgement section, um, if you uh, felt that you ever had to cut out space, like in case you, you go to the next conference and you want to add more stuff and you didn't have it, I would, um, I would suggest you could probably make this um, smaller. You could even include um, your logos down here as well if you needed to, to um, add space or take away space. Um, ultimately, I thought you could your uh, presentation was really great. Um, I know that you were a little bit nervous, <laughs> and I just wanted to talk about nerves for a second to everybody. Um, so, what does it mean to be nervous? And I talked about this in the in the poster tutorial. But for those of you first uh, looking at this specific component, nervousness. What does that really mean when you're nervous? It means that you care. It means that you really want to, um, that you know, you respect your research, you respect the program that you're representing, you respect the lab that you're representing, and that you really care about where you're going and what you're doing. And so if you're not nervous, you know, maybe you're just really experienced and you, you've got all those butterflies out, but being nervous means that you care. And mm -hmm. so it's totally okay to be nervous. <laughs> Um, I like to say that the more you do stuff like this and you've taken the opportunity to share your research with us again today, the more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to get being in front of a group. Mm -hmm.